Hey everybody, this is Jason from Curious About Cannabis. It is so nice to finally be talking to you once again. The past several months have been insane. Um, I'm sure for a lot of you out there, um, but speaking just for my own personal experience, since about the month of April, things have just been absolutely crazy. Um, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. Um, so just to highlight some of the things that I've been dealing with over the past several months and why you haven't heard as much from me or seen me post quite as much. Um, basically, um, all taking place simultaneously and over the period of just a couple months between June and July. Um, let's see, my um, a lot of my online accounts got hacked and I had to deal with that. My bank account got hacked. Um, and so someone was siphoning money out of my savings account, uh, caught that, had to have all my bank accounts closed and reopened. I had to go without access to my digital money for a week, which was an interesting exercise. Um, my cat, we found out, had jaw cancer and had to be put down, and that was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. He's, it was very, very sudden, like one day he was acting weird and not really eating so we took him to the vet and they were like he may live for another 24 hours and so that was really hard to process also during all of that time our air conditioner was going out and this is during like 107 degree heat um that our air conditioner went out four different times before uh finally we fixed enough things in it that it stopped breaking for now um Oh gosh, what else happened? Um, um, our one and a half year old daughter got sick. My wife got sick. Um, my wife ended up getting this crazy infection in her face that spread from her nose all the way across her face. Um, she was on antibiotics for like two weeks. She had to get hospitalized for like four days. Um, and that was really scary and kind of traumatic. And then shortly after that, our one and a half year old daughter smashes her head against the coffee table and just totally splits her head open. We had to rush to the ER. At that point, the nurses and doctors recognized us because we'd been in there so much. So our poor daughter had to get eight stitches in her head. Um, and we had to deal with that for about a week until the stitches came out. Uh, it's just been one thing after another. Our neighbor backed into our car. Um, one of my tires started to go flat and found out I had a screw in the tire and had to get that fixed. I mean, it's just like one obstacle after another getting thrown at us. Um, and it was, it was really, really dark, really rough there for a while. I had to put a lot of things on hold and just deal with what was immediately important. And then when things finally started to seem to be getting back to normal, uh, we get hit here in Southern Oregon with a series of they're calling generational, un, you know, once in a lifetime, unprecedented fires. The the fires that have moved through Southern Oregon recently, what makes them unique is that um, instead of them moving through the wilderness areas, which we're pretty used to, you know, every year we're, we are accustomed to getting very large fires that are tens of thousands of acres and usually burn near Crater Lake National Forest or something. Um, but these fires started in a town and spread basically right along the I-5 corridor through um, the towns and cities there. And so I essentially watched two towns just immediately south of where I live burn to the ground. And I've never experienced anything like this before. I've been through Hurricane Katrina. I've been through all sorts of things. Um, I've never seen anything like this, just how fast that devastation can move through an area. Um, you know, we were on fluctuating evacuation notices. We had to, you know, there was one night where I actually had to go through and find like the things I care the most about to pack them up in case our house burned down because we were at that point expecting that the fire was going to come through the city where we live because we're kind of on a sort of toward the southern end. And um, yeah, we thought we were going to lose our house. Um, luckily, winds came in um, that first night and blew slightly away from where my house is. 
Um, so sent the fires in a different direction, which, you know, I'm like really grateful and I feel blessed that that happened, but also I feel so devastated for all of the people that weren't so lucky. I mean, they're saying that approximately 2,300 or more residences were destroyed, um, just in, uh, last week's fire. So, um, Things have been really hard here, just trauma after trauma, you know, and not to mention there's always coronavirus still going on. I know multiple people now that have gotten coronavirus or that have it right now. Um, I know people that have lost family members from COVID. And then I also know a lot of people that um, are still very much um, saying that coronavirus is a hoax, that it's going to go away after the election season. Um, Even while people we know are contracting it and dying. So that's been tough. Um, But just a lot of things, a lot of things have just compounded. And I'm sure there's things that I haven't even remembered to mention because just so much has happened in just, I mean, literally like two, a two or three month period. Um, So that's why, you know, I had to put a pause on the podcast a little bit. I haven't been able to get videos out on the YouTube channel. Um, And, you know, in the case of when the fires are coming through, I had to break down the entire recording studio, which, I mean, it's not much compared to like a big studio, but I mean, it's a lot of equipment to break down and pack up and then have to unpack and set back up and test and make sure it's working right again. So I don't know. I guess what I have to say is, um, you know, um, I'm sure a lot of you out there are having a hard time and I'm with you. Um, hang in there and try to count your blessings, whatever you have, because everything you own could be lost in a moment. Um, that's what we're being reminded of right now here in Southern Oregon. So (sighs) with all of that news out of the way, I think the last video I made for you, uh, was announcing the upcoming release of the Curious About Cannabis book. And now we actually have the book so um let me see if it there we go so the curious about canvas book second edition um if you haven't gotten a copy yet um you know i encourage you to check it out if you are interested so far it's gotten really good uh reception um it's all five star reviews on amazon so far i'm sure we'll end up getting (laughs) some um grumpy people to come on there and um, put in some negative reviews at some point, but as of now, we're all five-star reviews, and some of the things that people are saying about the book, um, is exactly what I wanted people to say, um, you know, that it reads like a, like, kind of like a high school science textbook, um, and that it has all sorts of things in there to reinforce learning, um, and I'm excited that, um, there are some schools now that have been, inquiring about the book um, that might integrate it into some of their new cannabis cannabinoid science degree programs and classes and stuff so i'm just super stoked about that and it's it's sad that like all of these terrible things have happened over the past several months that honestly i haven't even really been able to enjoy the book release or the feedback that it's been getting and and not only did i publish this book i also published a children's book um, so this is a Toadstool's Treasures. It's a s- educational science um, story, based story for kids all about fungi and the environment. Um, before, you know, most of my work has been in botany since I moved to Oregon. But before I moved to Oregon, when I lived in Mississippi, um, I was really heavily studying mycology because it's humid there and there are pretty much mushrooms around year round. Um But then when I moved to Oregon, um, I shifted my science focus into botany. Um, But mycology has a special place in my heart. So anyway, that's what's been going on in my world. Um, I wanted to give you a little heads up of what you can expect from Curious About Cannabis um, over the next several months. So um, like I mentioned, season two of the Curious About Cannabis podcast is coming at the end of October. And I have lined up some great interviews over the next several weeks that are going to clip seven will be featured in season two. And then the full interviews will be released um, 
shortly after season two releases. Um, but these are interviews with scientists that I honestly, when starting this podcast, never thought I'd really get a chance to interview. There were people that were, you know, on my bucket list, but I kind of was like, yeah, you know, they'll never have time or, you know, who am I? Why would they want to talk to me? But you know, one thing that life keeps teaching me is that if you want something, make steps, take steps towards that thing, and a path usually opens up, and you might be surprised where it leads. I've been taught that lesson many, many times in my life, and I was just taught it again, um, because literally, I just got over my, um, I don't know, my lack of confidence, you know, whatever, and I just reached out to these people directly and told them who I was, what I was doing, and um, surprisingly, they agreed to participate. So I'm about to have some um, extended conversations with some of the, you know, biggest names in cannabis science, um, people that um, often don't even appear at conferences anymore because they're so busy and, you know, people that other people chart you know pay a lot of money to listen to and see so i'm going to be bringing it to you uh for free so you know these next series of interviews and season two of the curious about cannabis podcast to me you know what i think is that this is going to give you access to what is essentially a uh like a cannabis science conference for free i think you're going to enjoy it i think you'll get a lot of value out of it i'm really excited um, you know, as a scientist and as an educator and just as a passionate, uh, you know, someone who's just very interested in cannabis and all this, all this stuff, um, you know, I'm sort of right there with, with the fans here of just how giddy I am about these interviews and, and the content that's coming. So stay tuned. Uh, some other things that are on the horizon. Um, I'm working on creating um, a virtual version of my Curious About Cannabis workshops. And if you don't know, um, years ago, um, I developed a series of kind of like college level cannabis science, cannabinoid science workshops, and I've been tweaking them every year. And it's actually how the Curious About Cannabis book was developed. And then the Curious About Cannabis podcast was a spinoff of the book. Um, so these workshops are really where everything um, that you know about Curious About Cannabis really started brewing. And this year, one of the many things I'd planned for 2020 that didn't pan out was I was going to start these workshops again and offer them in person. And I usually have guest speakers and we do science experiments and all sorts of stuff. And it's really fun. And um, everyone that's attended one has seemed to like it a lot. Um, but... Uh, coronavirus happened and so all of my plans to go around and travel and do these workshops and do seminars and you know um, all of that got totally thrown out the window so I had to think about how you know how could we make this virtual and I think I've got it figured out um, I have done my workshops virtually one time for an international audience so I'm kind of leaning on that experience and then trying to learn from you know, all the knowledge that's coming out now about what other people are figuring out with trying to take learning experiences online and virtual. So um, I'm hoping to debut that in the winter, and I'll probably select only a few people to go through the workshop the first round. Um, and it'll be at a, a very discounted rate, um, primarily so I can test drive it, get a feel for it, get some feedback from the students and kind of fix it up even more before we really roll it out to a, a large audience. So be on the lookout for that coming in the winter. I'm also simultaneously working on a Curious About Cannabis learning platform that will allow anybody with internet access to kind of go through a self-paced series of cannabis and cannabinoid science lessons. And these lessons will be, um, there'll be videos of me lecturing mixed with um, content from podcast interviews, content from the, um, you know, educational podcast episodes, all blended together into one experience to guide people essentially through the content of the Curious About Cannabis book. Um, in a nutshell, that's pretty much what it is, is a self-paced way of really studying all that content, get, you know, and connecting with the primary research papers and stuff that you should really be familiar with. So, um, that 
maybe will be done sometime in the winter. Um, if not, it'll probably be spring um, of next year. But I'm really excited about that too. And my main goal is I want to connect you with really high quality, um, you know, not just cannabis science education, but cannabis and cannabinoid science education that, you know, is as uh, close to the researchers that have founded and studied this stuff as possible, that represents kind of a mature exploration of the science that tries to recognize biases and, you know, put them aside as much as, as, much as possible and, um, you know, and really take things to another level when it comes to how we talk about cannabis and cannabinoid science. Um, and I want to do all of that affordably. I don't want to put together some educational system that then you're gonna have to pay a thousand dollars to access or workshops that you're gonna have to pay you know two thousand dollars three thousand dollars to access um you know i want this to be you know reasonably accessible to most people and and ultimately i'm not going to be doing this cannabis science education stuff forever and so i want to build something that is pretty um Sustainable. I know the science of cannabis and cannabinoids will change over time, but um, you know, I want it to be something that is going to provide a good foundation um, now and well into the future, so that even if I walk away from curious about cannabis one day, um, you know, that that's going to still be valuable. Um, so that's what's all that's in my head as far as curious about cannabis goes. Um, there's a lot going on. I'm really excited about it. Um, I have some other announcements that I can't quite share yet that keep getting delayed, um, which will make sense eventually, but, um, I have some really cool, um, announcements, uh, to make just about things that I'm doing in my own world regarding cannabis science, um, both in terms of research and, and teaching and stuff. So, um, you'll just have to stay tuned to get those announcements once I get the thumbs up from the powers that be um, to make those announcements. So anyway, um, if you've gotten through this whole video, good for you. <laughs> I've kind of rambled a little bit, but I hope all of you out there are, you know, doing as well as you can be. I know things are stressful. Things are crazy. Um, and I know there are a lot of people out there that are just at this point really in survival mode. And, um, so I just want to say, um, just hang in there. Um, you know, things might end up getting worse before they get better, but, um, you know, times like these really emphasize the importance of family, friends, community. Um, so, um, anyway, with that, my heart's with you, all of you stay curious and take it easy. Bye-bye.